So as always, a good Wednesday to everyone. We're so excited to be together uh, to share these Journey with Jesus Bible readings and have some discussion. Uh, this is the first Wednesday of our May focus. Uh, in, our, in April, we were focusing on some of the encounters that the risen Jesus had with various individuals. And now in May, uh, we've moved to uh, the early message about Jesus. So after Jesus had uh, risen and appeared to disciples and others for 40 days and brought a lot of hope into people's lives. Uh, he ascends to heaven. That's actually tomorrow, Thursday, is the 40th day after Easter, so it'll be the day we remember Christ's ascension. And then uh, 10 days come, uh, 10 days more pass, the Holy Spirit comes. Uh, the followers of Jesus are out proclaiming the message in a lot of different settings, and that's going to be the focus of our May readings or these different uh, different. Uh, messages they give about Jesus and their whole experience with him and his ministry, his resurrection, and his life. So uh, we're very excited about that. Um, Deacon Lexan, I think we, we traditionally begin with one of the uh, little devotional prayers that's in our worship book and uh, thinking here in May about uh, a home stretch for uh, a lot of our schools, uh, college graduations happening, uh, just a, a lot happening, and there's a little prayer in here about uh, schools and education and thought we might pray that today as we move into the final month of the um, academic year. So uh, let's pray together. O oh God, God, source of all goodness, we give you thanks for the gift of reason and the opportunity for education. Bless our schools that they may be places of learning and safety, where teachers challenge the minds and nurture the hearts of students. Grant that teachers and students may work together in mutual respect and find joy in the challenges of academic life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, speaking of students, our reader today is one of our youth group members, Hunter, and uh, he's going to be reading from the fourth chapter of Acts, Acts chapter 4, and we're beginning with verse 1, with the very beginning, verse 1. In today's reading, we hear about how the disciples rejoice over everything that God has done for them, and that reminds me of my happy place, my little garden here on the back porch. I really enjoy just watching these plants grow and cultivating and caring for them, uh, looking after God's creation in a small way. A reading from Acts. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests and the cap, excuse me. <clears throat> While Peter and John were speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came to them much annoyed because they were preaching the pe teaching the people and proclaiming that in Jesus there is the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and they numbered about 5,000. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation and no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognized them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition. So they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what will we do with them? For it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them. We cannot deny it. But to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge. 
for we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people. For all of them praised God for what had happened, for the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than forty years old. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats, and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So we, we hear this beautiful little story from Acts where uh, it's after Jesus' uh, ascension and Pentecost and Peter and John had brought healing into a, uh, the life of a man who's been crippled for many, many years. Uh, and then they're brought before the leaders and they're asked to... Uh, uh, sort of defend themselves and explain why it is uh, that they've done what they've done. I don't, uh, Deacon Lexan, anything really stand out for you or catch your attention? In my version, um, beginning of uh, verse 19, this is what stuck out at me. Do you think God wants us to obey you or to obey him? We cannot keep quiet about what we have seen and heard. It stuck out at me because they're asking, do we obey God or do we obey the laws that are set out um, by humans? Uh, um, and I can resonate with some of that because we have that same type of, of traffic laws that, that we have. Uh, we, we prayed about schools, and so I know there are rules in schools, um, you know, about when you can walk in the hallways and that type of thing. And all of those laws are created to keep people safe and to create order. And so I can see where they're asking that question, but then ultimately, if, if we're thinking, you know, God's kingdom, then we should be obeying God and living in that tension of, well, we probably need to obey both of them. But Peter and John are now b being asked to what should they obey um, or who should they obey in the midst of this healing that's going on. So um, it's, it's kind of how do we do, how can we do both? Not necessarily serving two different masters, but how can Peter and John do what they are been told to by God to do, which is heal, but also it's creating unrest in the community because of the laws of the time. Well, right, or the edict that they're getting ready, that they're issuing is that you, you can't do this in the name of Jesus at that point. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, I... I Tough to sermon. I, I just was kind of overwhelmed by the repetition of the Holy Spirit being present in all this and how somehow they're being guided with wisdom from the Holy Spirit to know not their own wisdom or their own preferences or mm. their own biases or whatever it is, but somehow the Holy Spirit is guiding them to know what what uh, what is right for them to do and whether it's from God or whether it's just something they want. Uh, you know, I think about um, a lot of laws throughout history, whether it was slavery or segregation mm. or things that laws that were actually on the book and, and how at some point or, or even in different societies where there were laws made in uh, Nazi Germany or whatever it was. And, and uh, our, uh, Bonhoeffer and others said we have to stand up against this because it's not consistent with... Um, with God's will, uh, and and to to this month, the focus being the message about Jesus. So it's interesting in this early encounter. What is it that they're actually? Uh, what is the message about Jesus that's being proclaimed or enacted? And what they're talking about is like back at the beginning that they got that they were talking about the resurrection of the dead, 
and that annoyed folks. Uh, so that, but the message about Jesus was one of resurrection and new life and the power of God to conquer God's love to conquer everything, even death itself, and that our journey with God extends uh, beyond our physical time here on earth. So all that that resurrection of the dead phrase might include, uh, and and that's what they're proclaiming about Jesus, or. They're proclaiming a message of healing, that in Jesus' name, uh, this man's life has been changed forever, and now he's whole. And, and so the message about Jesus that's being, that's being brought forth uh, isn't one of a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know, a lot of judgment and condemnation and hellfire and brimstone. It's this good news joy of resurrection and and healing and wholeness and even mentions like sal god's saving love and grace god's salvation for all people and and that's the message that's kind of getting people upset because maybe it's breaking down barriers or 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 doing you know kind of challenging older structures or something or, or their confined way of thinking as to who deserves god's love uh, so uh, it's really a, really is a powerful little episode there, I think. Uh, in, anything uh, else speak to you? Or? We're sitting here in front of uh, what our part of our Easter message was, which we were, um, uh, during a Sunday, we were given a couple of stones, and, and one stone was to represent maybe what, what we have done to, to be um, a stone that prevented someone else to get to Jesus. That was, that was um, and how could that be? How do we atone for that, right? How do we say, hey, I'm sorry, I have been a stone in your path, Pastor Eric. And so laying that down, right, and letting go of that. But then also recognizing that um, there's a time, there may have already been or will be a time where someone else might be a stone in my path. And how do I, how do I um, reconcile that? Um, how do I work through that so that I don't... Um, I can truly do what they are doing here, which is what is this message about the power of Jesus that allows the healing, the healing that can occur not only in my own heart, but in someone else's heart that maybe I have harmed. Um, and Jesus is that um, cornerstone by which um, we seek that discernment. Uh, we seek the wisdom um, from Jesus's spirit so that we can remove whatever is in our path um, to God and to one another, um, and also trying to um, bring um, unity um, within a group. And when I say unity, I don't necessarily mean we all think the same, but that unity that gives us the opportunity to agree to disagree, that we don't um, let harsh words um, or to use your phrase from earlier, we don't, we don't blow up um, and, and create a stumbling block for someone else that maybe there's a way to... Um, see the, the healing message um, that, that needs to be coming across um, to, to, again, break down barriers instead of continuing to build up barriers. Yeah, it struck me that uh, there's that point in the story where the, the leaders dismiss Peter and John, and then they have this conversation among themselves. And rather than really do what they want to do, which is just eliminate them entirely, they have to wrestle with the fact that that there's this person whose life has been healed and transformed and and everybody's seen that and because healing and god's healing has happened in a life and a life has been changed they have to back off from uh maybe their own intentions um and I just wonder how often that happens that we we can get in debates about arguments get in our camps for uh, different opinions about whatever but in the reality if someone's being healed and their life is being changed and wholeness is happening that that somehow forces us to maybe let go of some of our stuff that we want to hold on to and say god's love can actually break through that and work something they didn't quite get around to that final acceptance but it was the point where they had to back off because god had worked healing and wholeness right. I just meant, the final thing that caught my attention was verse uh, 22. It, it says, for the man on whom the sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. And so <laughs> I was thinking about that. Well, life expectancy was different, of course, but that, oh, wow, man, God can actually work something in somebody uh, over 40 years old, you know. <laughs> I'm sitting here 20 years after the fact, so 
maybe God can work something in me still too. Who knows? In, so. God can work in all of us, no right. matter our right. age, right? right. <laughs> so um, we um, we always enjoy these conversations. I pray that that you find meaning in them some somewhere along the way, whether it be Wednesday or some other time when you come across this. There's a whole set of Journey with Jesus readings and conversations after them on YouTube. I encourage you to go look uh, any of them in our collected library. Share them with others. Never know how God and the Holy Spirit might work through a little uh, phrase or conversation or a reading of God's word to continue to change life and bring wholeness. But uh, we usually, we always end with prayer. I might say a few words, give some time for silence. So you can lift up to God whatever's on your heart or mind whenever you come across this. And then Deacon Lexan graciously uh, concludes and leads us into the Lord's Prayer. So let us pray. Oh God, we are overwhelmed at the ways that uh, still through the name of Jesus you bring healing and wholeness into this world and into uh, our lives. We thank you for the boldness of those early believers who would, uh, who would speak his name of, uh, of love and grace and forgiveness and salvation and resurrection and new life, uh, no matter what the obstacles. And we pray that you might give us that boldness as well to... Uh, let go of the things that are barriers for us and, um, and just be immersed in your healing wholeness and message of love for the world. Uh, uh, hear whatever it is that we lift up to you now in these moments of prayer. God, I sit here in awe that the message of your son the message of your son's disciples, Peter and John, the message of the Holy Spirit working through all these people over the past 2,000 years, this message is still relevant to us today. And for that, I am truly grateful. Thank you for this opportunity to, to lean on your spirit and to gain wisdom. Help us as uh, we may engage in difficult conversations with our neighbors or, or even strangers. Help us to keep our emotions in check. Help us to keep your message at the center. Now hear us as we say your Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Again, a good Wednesday uh, to you and pray that you might sense God's healing and wholeness and uh, love in your life in whatever ways it's needed. And we look forward to uh, see, seeing you again. God's peace. <laughs>